getting to know George Sandoro, uh, I used to call him my father. In fact, most of the boys at Morocco Salas then, we used to call him our father. The reason being, he will always come around at the training, even at, uh, before the match, hold you at the back of your head and call you, hi, my son, hi, my son. That's just typical of how Sandor was to all of us. I grew up in, in Pulukwani. Uh, I was born and bred in Pulukwani. But always, I used to come, I used to, come to Johannesburg uh, during December time to come for holidays. And those were the best times for me to actually go and watch uh, the top matches play in yeah. Johannesburg. And one of those matches that I could not miss was the Highlands Park versus uh, Arcadia Shepherds. The Highlands Park versus uh, the Debit Cities and, and stuff like that. And the Lusitanos of that time. And you know, during, during those times, uh, during the apartheid, things were not that very, very easy. But, but we were actually we were persevering to want to see what we actually wanted to see. Because we, we used to read on the newspapers, to hear on the radios, they're talking about the Brazilians that have actually arrived at Highlands Park. You know what I'm saying? The, the Brazilians that have actually... Now, they were talking about John Sandoro and Walter de Silva, those times, you watch the type of football. And when you go after the match, you'll actually just want to be very, 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 very close to him and just see, uh, you know, what, 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 what is he doing after the game. When I arrived at uh, uh, Morocco Salos in uh, 1980 for the first time, in, in a team of highly talented players, the likes of James Mabena, Akula Lueki Kim, the likes of Norman Gold Power Mark Hesler, one of the best highly talented skillful right back but uh, Santoro was actually at the time trying to push he liked he liked the guys of James Mabena because he was playing left back you actually uh, push him to always attack uh, use your full backs to attack to increase the numbers going forward which is exactly what is happening now when you look at Daniel Alves and the uh, Brazilian uh, national team those are the type of players Marcelo at the uh, from Real Madrid so it's it's, it's the, the kind of a culture that has been there during uh, Santoro's time. So Santoro, for me, uh, he brought a new diversion of football in South Africa. Before training and even before the match, one person in particular who was very fast in getting into the dressing room, changed quickly, you know what? To go and juggle the ball around with the coach, is Menin. And don't be surprised why he was so like what? I mean, the ball was like, it, it will stick to him like a magnet, like, like he, had, he had a glue on himself. But something that I'm sure he has learned from George Sandoro at that particular time. Because they used, they used to do this before training. They used, he used to do that. Even Sandoro, even when he is wearing a tie, he had a style, some, some kind of a style of putting, putting a, a, a jacket like this. Before, before I forget, he used, to, he used to hold, you know, like, like to hold a jacket like this it's all the time. But this is my position that I, but he'll juggle the ball around, standing up, you know, with the head and this and that, but still talking, ah, buha, ah, this and what this and now, some of the ways we do not understand in Brazilian way, but you know, we can actually, ah, what about the Malaka, this and that. But you know what, at that time, he was all, he was more in it, more in it, in the time of, because Ace Menin used to do some certain skills and he said, no, no, I'll do it better than you. At this age, you can imagine. Now, he's that type of a person that we actually enjoyed and shared the moment with. Just like that.